Tim bir an dosyon. Genel General Salakaya. Çaksı un militam yayına. Tasmai Sri Guru Enma. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stafti Tam Yen Bhutalai. Tvayam Rupa Kedam Mayam Dadati Svana Padati Kam. Bande Tam Shiguro Shi Uta Padakamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha. Shirupam Sagraja Tam Sahagana. Ragana tam vitam tam sajiva, <coughs> sadvaitam sarvadutam parijana, sahitam krishna chaitanya deva, sri radha krishna padam sahagana lalita, sri vishakam vitam chahe krishna karuna sindhu dina bandhu jagat pate gopesha gopika kanta, radha kanta namostite, <coughs> tapta kanchana, Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Swari Brikabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye <coughs> Manchakalpa Dharubhischa Pripa Sindhupe Vaja Patitanam Pabhani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha Namaho Vrishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudamani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya de Satarine <coughs> Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda <coughs> Sri Advaita Gadada Rasivasari Gaur Bhakta Rindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare <coughs> Advaitam Achutam Anari Ananta Rupam Adyam Purano Purusho Nava Yoga Namcha Vedesha Dulabya Abdu Abdu Vedesha Su Abdulab Abdulabya Atma Bhakto Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Bajami Vedesha Dur Durlab Abdurlam Atma Bhakto Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Bajami <coughs> Uh, the word there's certain words that we use which we don't really can really define in relationship to what we use them for the words are achintya inconceivable uh, uh, eternal unlimited so we use the word eternal something that doesn't begin and doesn't end. <laughs> Unlimited means something that's almost, it's like eternal, but at the same time, there's many <clears throat> of that category. It's not many, it's inconceivable. And that word inconceivable, but achuta, achintya <laughs> is applied to something that the mind, the senses, or even the imagination cannot reach through any logical definition or explanation. <clears throat> this applies, these words apply to the different forms of the Lord. As we mentioned this verse, Advaitam, Advaitam Achutam Anantam, Advaitam Achutam Anantam Adnyarupam, Advaitam Achutam Anadi, anantarupam. Anadi means original. So, Krishna is eternal, and all the forms that come from Krishna are also eternal. But then we have Adi Purush, the original eternal. <laughs> so, how can something be eternal? unlimited, never beginning, and at the same time to be an original form of that same eternal. Then we come into the category of achintya, inconceivable. Jiva Goswami emphasizes this point in relationship to trying to describe Krishna. It's inconceivable. <laughs> the mind, it's the intelligence, the senses, obviously. We take it from the basic, the senses are the lowest, the mind is higher, the intelligence is higher. 
that's the highest capacity that one can use in order to understand something is the intelligence, the most finest of all and the most superior of all mental ways of, of evaluation is through intelligence. Now you can go into the area of imagination, which is sometimes not even true in the sense of the word. It means putting together mental, sensual and intellectual ideas into a something that is so way beyond what is uh, apparently available with our, within our purview of our, our existence. And then you can imagine anything and you can take that imagination to different areas of limitations. But even that cannot nearly even come close to approach the understanding of the supreme nature. So how do you understand that something is eternal and it has many aspects of itself that are also eternal, but there one there is one that is the source of all eternal. So the verse is Ishwara Parma Krishna Sajit Ananda Vigyarha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karna Karnam. First verse in the Sri Brahma Samhita spoken by Lord Brahma describing Krishna as the, the source of all manifestations of the Godhead, original, unequaled, never nothing superior, uh, whatever cause is in existence on all levels, both material and spiritual. There are two aspects to causes, immediate and remote. Immediate is what we can perceive in terms of how something has happened. Remote means you can't see behind the scenes. In other words, everything has a remote cause, everything has an immediate cause. We, we tend to have, we get we familiar with eyes ourselves with the immediate cause. This happened because of this. But then again, behind that, there is the initiating cause that makes the immediate cause apparent. And that is the remote cause. And Krishna is the remote cause of everything. <laughs> so behind everything is Krishna. He is Sarva Karna Karna. He is the cause of all causes. <laughs> if you, you line up, they have this game called dominoes. You line them up in a certain way and you push one domino and it hits another one and it goes and hits another one. And all the way down the line, all the dominoes collapse. So the, the collapsing principle for each of the domino is the domino before the one that hit that domino. In other words, you can see this domino made that domino fall. But then there's the source, a remote cause, which is the original pushing, which caused all the dominoes to fall. <laughs> so that's Krishna. <laughs> He is, uh, he is, uh, what is the word? <clears throat> he cannot be seen, but he is active. <laughs> and he, he's making everything happen according to two aspects of himself. One, his will, what he wants to happen, and what he allows to happen. <laughs> you know, sometimes people say, well, God, why is God uh, allowing this to happen? Because he puts the energies in motion. In other words, he makes up the three modes of material nature, he infuses them with, the, with his energies, which have a certain activity and reaction based on the desire of the uh, participant or the player. And whatever they get in terms of that reaction is due to their desire. But he puts up the play, he, he's, the, he's the show maker. <laughs> It's like if you play a video game, you have a certain limit to what you can perform, but then you have so many options within that limit. So in the same way, Krishna gives you so many options for what you can receive, but ultimately it's your desire and he is the one that makes up the all possible options but he's not directly involved. Therefore, the machine is working according to, just like a watchmaker makes a watch, 
he puts all the parts together and the watch functions in a certain way. And if you have certain buttons on the watch, it, it can display certain messages, can calculate certain uh, activities. It tells time. It has many aspects to it. You can even, you know, they have stop watches, which are also part of regular watches. So it has so many dynamics, it's very complex. The, the watchmaker is not involved with all of the activities that the, that the watch does, but he's the one that puts it all together. So that's his permissive will. He allows things to happen because that's the way it's set up. <laughs> uh, but then again, he has his direct will and that's what he wants to happen. And that's, uh, that's more in the category of spiritual. So he's directly involved with the spiritual, indirectly involved with the material. So in the, in the spiritual, he manifests himself as himself in different forms of himself. And they are called his uh, expansions or incarnations, avatars, different manifestations of himself in different categories. They're called portions of the plenary portions or portions of the portions of the plenary portions. In the Sita Chaitanya Charitamrita, we have a very nice description in the form of a discussion between Lord Chaitanya and Sri um, Sanatana Goswami. Mostly Lord Chaitanya is speaking Sanatana Goswami is asking some questions in between, but the Lord is speaking, he's describing the different categories of forms, the Vishnu forms, the Narayan forms, the, the manifestations of the different plenary portions of the, the Narayan and Vishnu forms. And he's also describing the different categories within the forms, such as uh, Vaibhava, Prakash, Vaibhava, Vilash, Swamsa, living entities are called Vivanamsa. And, the, and he goes on to describe other categories of forms also by description. And then you get a little idea of the different categories of the manifestations of the forms. All of these forms are eternal. <laughs> but Krishna is the source of all these forms. And so we worship these forms. We call this uh, part of the system known as Pancharatri. Pancharatri is the form of worshiping the Lord in his deity form. His de this, is, this science is given to us by Sri Narada Muni. It's why it's called Narada Pancharatri. Uh, our process of Krishna consciousness is given to us by the Acharyas and specifically detailed by Srila Prabhupada himself. Prabhupada himself is of two categories, that is um, uh, Pancharatriki and Bhagwat. They're called vidis or, or uh, initiations, initiates, initiates, not initiations, initiates. You have Pancharatriki, deity worship. You have Bhagavad Vidhi, we call it Pancharatriki Vidhi also, or knowledge of. And Bhagavad Vidhi means hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, which makes up the process of, uh, as given by Lord Chaitanya. But Lord Chaitanya also instituted and also taught to a certain level uh, the process of Pancharatri Vidhi, which is equal to but inferior to Bhagavad Vidhi. Now, it's interesting how it could be equal to and inferior to. In the equality, just like if you see a train, you'll see trains have two tracks. The wheels of the train ride on two tracks, like that. And uh, so these two forms of worship of the Supreme Pancharatriki Vidhi and Bhagavad Vidhi are called two, tra tra two tracks on the transcendental train. And both are necessary, but one is superior and one is that hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. But in order to do that in the age of Kali, people have to worship the Lord in his deity form because deity worship 
is required for those persons who don't have much understanding of the knowledge of the process of devotion. Uh, they have to see the Lord in his form. And this seeing of the Lord is a manifestation of one of the forms of the Lord. Now, this is interesting. All of the forms of the Lord are eternal. Is the deity form of the Lord eternal also? It is and it's not. <laughs> Again, you have apparent contradiction. The deity form of the Lord becomes eternal once the prana pratishta ceremony is instituted, which is the, the ceremony by which the deity is, is constituted for worship. And at that point, the deity becomes eternal. Before then, the deity is not eternal. The ingredients making up the deity apparently is material. Uh, the five material elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. Mostly earth, water, and fire make up the deity. We call them energy made out of marble, made out of wood, made out of brass, material elements. <clears throat> but when formulated to make the form of the Lord and then they constituted by the initiation process called prana pratishta, then that worship of the deity or that deity actually becomes eternal. <laughs> it's no longer temporary. So of all of the forms of the Lord, the deity form becomes eternal at a certain point. <laughs> And then it's no longer uh, what we say. You can't refer to it as matter. When Lord Chaitanya, uh, secretary Su Damodar Goswami, met this one devotee who made a glorification of Lord Jagannath, referring to Lord Jagannath as made out of wood. He didn't like that because it put him in, put the Lord in the category of something material. Of course, his body is of wood, but it's transcendental. Just like from the highest principle of spirituality, there is nothing uh, material. Everything is spiritual. Everything is eternal. Even matter is eternal. Can we say matter is eternal? We never say that. We say matter is temporary. But what we're saying is when we say matter is temporary, we're saying that the forms of matter are temporary, but the elements that make up the material energy are, are eternal. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego, these make up all the material elements. So these elements in their basic forms, their, their most simplest and basic forms, are coming from Krishna himself. That's why they say Krishna is the original source of creation. We know that there is a secondary creator, and he is also given that position by Krishna, and that is Lord Brahma. He takes the material energy and formulates it into the different forms, and then the forms actually manifest in so many different 8,400,000 species of life. These are called bodies. But none of these forms are eternal. Only the ingredients that make up the forms are eternal. Give you an example, just like if you take water and you put it in a pot and you turn on, turn on the fire and you let it boil, and pretty soon all the water will be gone. So what happened to that water? It changed molecular structure. It went into the form of gas. So now it exists in the gaseous form, it's no longer in the state of water, but it's still, the molecular structure still remains, but it is, it is changed in constitution. So if you're using, understanding this example, then you can understand that there is nothing material. Everything is ultimately spiritual. And if everything is ultimately spiritual, everything is non, everything spiritual is non-different than Krishna. And therefore everything is Krishna. Now, how do we say that? How can everything be Krishna at the same time not Krishna? Again, we, the explanation is there, that Krishna creates everything out of himself and everything remains with a part of him but manifests itself in different forms of itself for different purposes 
And these purposes are two, eternal, spiritual, and temporary matter. So, the, so when you speak of the, the Lord's forms, they are eternal. And the form that we are most familiar with, this is the deity form of the Lord, as again, and the worship is for, is, the, is, for, is authorized by one section of the Vedas called the Pancharatriki Vidhi. Now, for those who practice Krishna consciousness in Grihasta Ashram, those who live in family life, it is uh, mandatory. Now, I use the word mandatory rather than essential or necessary because that is the understanding. It's mandatory for those in that ashram to worship the, for the deity form of the Lord. <laughs> because it's otherwise, because those in Grihasta ashram are active in dealing a lot with the material energy. And then in other words, they have maintenance of the family, they have occupation in the secular arena. So therefore their contact with the external energy sometimes is much more than their contact with the direct spiritual energy in the form of the sadhana they perform. So in that sadhana <clears throat> or in that understanding of worship in order not to become afflicted or overly affected by the material energy, deity worship become, becomes mandatory for the Grihasta ashram. And therefore one should establish and worship the deity form. Now the deity is Krishna. There's no difference between Krishna and the deity. As we, may, as we, may, as we mentioned, as soon as the the prana pratishta. Now we're talking, when we speak of prana pratishta, we're speaking about authorized temple worship. For those who have deities at home and do not do formal prana pratishta, is your deity no longer um, considered eternal or is the deity less to Krishna than any other deity? No, Krishna manifests himself in the form of him form and they're all absolutely himself in that particular form. But through the process of worship, and here's where the key word is, through the process of worship, the deity becomes, what we say, reveals himself as who he actually is. For those who worship the deity at home, the process of time, the element of time, the principle of time becomes the pranapratishta. That means over a series of worship, after a certain period of time, the establishment of the worship of that deity is eternal, and that deity is no non-different than Krishna. It's always been like that, but it comes to that level of uh, realization through the, the element of time. So worship of the Lord in his deity form is mandatory for those in the Grihasta ashram. And of course, they will, generally we worship the Lord in, the, in his form as Gornitai. Uh, sometimes we have Prabhupada deities also. But for the Lord, we have Gornitai. We have Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani. We have uh, Radha Krishna. And due to the influence of the Indian community within the ISKCON movement, we have Ladu Gopal. <laughs> he has been brought in mostly through the, uh, the auspices, you might say auspices of the Indian culture, because people in India who have come and taken part in our movement have a tendency to worship Ladu Gopal, which is Krishna in his Baal form, very sweet like that. And so these are the different deities that we generally worship. Of course, devotees sometimes have other deities like Prahlad Nishringadev or Lakshmi Nishringadev like that. Um, what other forms do we worship? These are some of the essential and main forms. 
Many devotees worship the Lord in his, in his form as shalagram shilas. And they're self-manifesting forms of the Lord that uh, indicate a particular uh, form of the Lord. So deity worship is quite variegated and there's different levels of practice of deity worship. But for grihastas, in order for them to chant the holy names of the Lord in, or come to the point of chanting the holy names of the Lord without offense, deity worship is mandatory. Again, we use the word mandatory. Yes, we have Sita Ram, Lakshman Hanuman deities. Sorry, I forgot that one. That was an important one. <clears throat> And so these are the different forms. So the most easiest and the most uh, offense-free form of the Lord is Gornitai. They don't accept offenses, but that doesn't mean we should be anything less serious in the practice of that deity worship. A little bit more difficult is to worship uh, Jagannath. A little bit higher is Laks Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman, and even the highest is Radha Krishna worship like that. <clears throat> so, um, and therefore, deity worship has become, and it is important that it has become such an important part of our practice of Krishna consciousness. We even see that sannyasis who travel sometimes can be have their own personal deities for worship like that, or keep those deities in a certain place and perform worship when they are personally present. So the, these, this form of the Lord is, is what is called Archa Vikrahar. It is also a form of the Lord, which is uh, Kripa. Kripa means merciful. It's a very merciful form of the Lord because the Lord agrees to come in the presence of his devotee, his worshiper, and accept service. He becomes subordinate to his devotee. In other words, the Lord puts himself in a place that he becomes dependent on his devotee, dependent in the sense that uh, we establish a form of worship such as waking the deity up, putting the deity to rest, uh, offering worship of the deity in the form of various types of pujas, uh, offering food to the deity, dressing the deity, decorating the deity, and performing various kinds of festivals centered around the deity. Um, Everything is dependent on the quality of worship, and the Lord accepts that as his reason for appearing in that form. Now, there have been examples when worship has been established and has developed, but then it has degraded or decreased. And sometimes when that comes to a certain level of uh, uh, degradation or what we say decretion then the Lord actually disappears that deity is no longer there it either burns up it gets stolen by someone or it says sometimes it just disappears the deity is just gone <laughs> so these are the things that indicate that the worship has gotten so low that the Lord has actually left and that's happened in a few temples um, the deities that we have in um, in Rajpur, Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, near our Mayapur temple were given to us because at one point they were worshipped hundreds of years ago, but the worship uh, deteriorated and went down to nothing. And at one point there was no worship at all. At one and. And because of that, the temple itself that was housing the deity, it wasn't, nobody was watching the deity, it collapsed on top of the deities and the deities were buried underneath the debris of the temple. That's how these deities were gotten. They were unearthed from the collapsed temple, 
we, we cleaned them up and brought them to where we are, they are now and began to worship. So the deity is non-different than the Lord. This is illustrated by certain pastimes that the Lord performs, um, just like we have in, a, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the pastime of Shakshi Gopal, the deity who talked, the deity who walked. Mm -hmm. So deities can talk, deities can walk, deities can eat the food, you can discuss things with your deity also if you on the level of that uh, acumen of spiritual practice. <laughs> um, so that, that is Krishna. He, he manifests himself in that form to accept our service like that. There is one deity in South India where there's a, a group of um, saints. They're called the Alvars, the 12 Alvars. And they're known as the saints of South of the South India, mostly from Tamil Nadu. And uh, there was one Alvar. <laughs> he was a uh, below a sutra. He was practically, I can't remember which Alvar it was. Maybe someone from South India knows. Um, he was a particular personality that was not allowed in the temple because because of his, uh, his Gautra sister. So he wasn't allowed to worship the deity, but he was worshiping that deity. Kanaka Das. I'm not, yeah, could be. And, uh, but he used to come and see this the one deity in, in this temple from the back window. There used to be a window right and only see the back of the deity. He <laughs> couldn't see the front of the deity. But he was worshiping that deity for many, many years. Finally, at one point, uh, the deity turned around. The deity actually wanted to see his pure devotee, so he actually turned around. And that deity is in that position now. He's looking backwards, turning around, looking towards his devotee, who is looking at him through this window in the back part of the temple. Now that's a nice, there's another story of another Alvar who was worshiping the deity in one particular place in Kamal Nadu. Um, I don't remember the actual town, but he was very famous as being the deity's greatest devotee. And he would stay always with the deity in the temple 24 hours a day, worshiping the Lord in different ways. The king of that particular village or province, a local king, he wanted to see this saint. So he sent his servants to notify the saint that the king wants to see him, he wants to meet him. The, uh, the Alvar said, well, actually, to see me, he can hear. <laughs> when the word came back to the king, he, he was somewhat insulted that he was asked to go visit the saint rather than the saint coming to him. He was a little proud of his position as being king. So he decided, well, if he does not want to come, then he can't stay in the temple. So he sent his guards to force that Alvar to leave, not only the temple, but to leave the, the village he, they were in. So being as, so they came and they said, either you leave or we take you to jail. <laughs> so he said, all right, I will leave. So he got up and he started to leave and he was walking out of town. Now, as he was walking out of town, his worshipful deity didn't want to tolerate that. So the deity got up and started to follow his devotee out of town. Now the man, the, the saint is walking, the deity's walking behind him, and then the townspeople, they're seeing what's happening. They said, well, if the deity is leaving, we're leaving too. So pretty soon the word got back to the king that everyone in the town is leaving. <laughs> so the king became somewhat astonished at the same time repentant. 
and said, please, he came personally to beg for that, that uh, saint to return and take up his service again in the temple, which he did. And everyone, including the, the townspeople and the deity, returned to the temple. That's a nice story. It's one of the stories from the life of the Alvars there. If you study the 12 Alvars, there are really amazing stories attached to their lives that you, especially, um, what is it? That one, Nam Alvar. Nam Alvar is really an amazing person. And uh, there is one Alvar that's really one interesting. I can't remember his name. He, it's almost it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember. He's the one that established the temple in Sri Rangam, uh, Tirupati. Um, let's see. Tirumangai. That's right. His name is Tirumangai. Tirumangai Alvar. And that, that story of how that temple got established is most amazing. <laughs> I won't go into it. Maybe some other day you can remind me of this pastime and I'll tell the story. It's quite phenomenal. It's uh, something that we generally we don't follow as a principle, but it's a nice story. How that temple was built by this one powerful saint, her name is Tiro Mangai. The Prabhupada talks about him in a few of his lectures. So these are the, uh, this is the deity form of the Lord. Uh, even in our ISKCON society, we have many examples. And the deity that sits in front of the Sringa Dev in Germany, Jyada Nisringa, Prahlad and, and the Sringa Dev, Jyada Nisringa, in our new Simhachalam, there's another deity of the Sringa Dev that sits in front of that deity. It's a smaller deity, but it's a very, very powerful deity. When they were giving the symbols of that deity, they were placing the symbols of the Lord in his different hands. There was one hand they wouldn't, they weren't able to place the symbol on. The symbol was not was not being accepted by the deity. This was told to me by the Pajari who was there at the time. And uh, they gave up. And at one point, the deity itself manifested his own symbol which was a form of a flame. They were trying to give him another symbol. I can't remember which symbol it was, but he didn't want that symbol. And he manifested his own symbol in the form of fire. And that you can see that on the deity when you go. And so there are many, many, I say the word many, and I don't mean that in an exaggerated way. There are many stories within our ISKCON society of devotees having personal exchanges with the deities, uh, talking to the deities, deities walking, deities refusing, deities accepting, so many different forms. So Krishna in his deity form is not different than Krishna in all of his other forms. And he's very, very kind and man of merciful. So those of us who worship the deities should be very diligent to keep the principles of deity worship uh, high, such as super clean, very clean, revolutionary clean, cleanliness beyond the level of normal cleanliness, and very, very devotional in the way we perform our activities in front of the deity. We should never argue in front of the deity, never speak loud in front of the deity, never criticize others in front of the deity, um, uh, never... Uh, come in front of the deity in an unclean state, uh, and never eat in front of the deity. These are all of the principles that we follow both within the temple and within the home also. So, okay, so I wanted to somehow illustrate the different forms of the Lord and how all the Lord's forms are eternal and also manifest his different aspects and qualities like that some more than others but as that verse says advaitam achyuram nadi ananti rupam adyam puranam purusho nava yovanam cha vedeshya durlab abadurlam atma bhakto govinda mari pusham tam maham vachami achinta advaita achyuram advaitam anadi ananta rupam 
And then there's another verse which says that departure eva. See, I can't remember that verse. It starts with the word departure eva. Someone can find that verse. Just like you light one candle and then you take that candle and light a second candle with the first candle. And then you light all other candles with these other candles. All of the candles that are lit have the same illuminating potency. But the original candle is the source of all the other candles. So all of the manifestations of the Lord have the, the potency of the original form of the Lord. But they do not manifest these potencies in their lilas as they appear in the material realm like that. But Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that's important for us to understand. He is the source of all incarnations of himself, avatars, manifestations. There are six categories of incarnations and Krishna is the source of all these categories and the varieties within the categories like that. So they say to give a little indication of the, temp the nature of unlimitedness, you can't really describe something that is unlimited, but Prabhupada would use the example, if you sit onto the bank of the, the ocean and you're on the shore and you're watching the waves, you think I'm, I'm gonna count all the waves that come in. So you'll be counting for how long? <laughs> I mean, you can do it the whole lifetime and you still you still keep counting afterwards. So, yeah, the Lord's forms are eternal and unlimited, both, both eternal and unlimited. <laughs> but the most merciful manifestation of Krishna's form is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya there's no more magnanimous, merciful, available, uh, kind form of the Lord than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And al although he is non-different than Krishna, he is called Avatar E. He is not an avatar. He is the source of all avatars. And yet he is the most merciful and available of all the manifestations of incarnations. So we worship Lord Chaitanya in this age by chanting the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Now the worship of God in this age is very simple, direct, and very uh, spiritually powerful, and that is chanting his holy name like that. And so even if we perform deity worship in any of the forms of the Lord, all of these uh, forms of worship, pujas, or any kinds of homas, anything, all must be accompanied by the chanting of the holy name, because in this age, the Yuga Dharma is Harinam Sankirtan. Kalair Dosha Nidi Raja Astiyaku Mahagun Kirtana Eva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangam Param Bajer Iti Soda Sakam Nam Nam Kali Kama Sanasanam Nata Padateyo Payo Sarva Veda Shudrishate Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari And one more verse um, Kali Kale, Nama Rupa, Krishna Avatar, Nama Hoite Sarva, Jagat Nistara, that the Lord manifests himself as himself in this age as incarnation. It is called Nama Avatar. He is non different than his, his name. And those who seek shelter, protection, and worship must worship the Lord in this particular form in this age. We can worship the Lord in many manifestations of himself, but it must be accompanied by and given preference in the form of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If you're doing deity worship and you're not chanting the holy names of the Lord, 
You're simply pouring ghee upon ashes. That's all. You're not getting any benefit from that deity worship. You must worship the Nama Rupa, the form of the Lord in this age, along with any other form of deity worship you may want to uh, employ in your life. Okay, so we can uh, conclude here. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you very much uh, for glorifying eternal unlimited form of uh, Krishna. And uh, for me, it was like a bullets of nectars one after another. <laughs> so many things, uh, pastimes, uh, which was showing Krishna is not only uh, just unlimited, eternal or great, but he's also sweet when it comes to his devotee. Uh, so <laughs> thank you, Guru Maharaj. It was really, really great. Um, I have like few questions, but I will hold because there are many questions on the chat from various devotees. Uh, if it's okay, Guru Maharaj, can I read these uh, questions? Please. <laughs> so first uh, is from Robert Prabhu. He's saying, uh, I hear a lecture that it is a problem when devotees have their own deities as they don't come to the local temple for the worship in that case in many places. So do you have any comment on that, your servant, Bhakta Rauvato? Well, Prabhupada told us that if you're staying in the temple, in other words, if you're residing in the temple, you should not keep your own deities separate in your own area. You should worship the, the temple deities as the deities. That keeps, that keeps the Sangha together, that keeps all the devotees who live in the temple united in the, in the, in the worship. Um, for the Grihastas, it is recommended, as I mentioned, not only recommended, but mandatory to keep deities at home because the Grihastas, they have um, responsibilities within the family and many times they're not able to, for whatever reason, to visit the temples. Therefore, in order to keep worship of the deity regular, they manifest that worship at home and along with keep, making the home a temple. The home, the home becomes mandir also. When the deity is present and it's given that position as being the proprietor of the home. And there are many stories in relationship to that. I can tell one story, it's kind of long but it kind of illustrates that the Lord is the proprietor of the place he resides in. So what Roberto is saying is true for those who live in the temple and uh, those who live outside with families. Now I'm not saying those like devotees who are not married, I'm saying those who have families and are married, initiated by their um, spiritual master, they must worship the deity regularly. If they can come to the temple every day, then that's fine, but that's not always possible for those in Grihasta Ashram because of family responsibilities, work responsibilities like that. So there, there is some rules, not, not so much rules, but there are certain restrictions that are placed upon worship, individual worships when it preempts, I use that word preempts, the worship of the deity in the temple. But in, in many cases, it's not like that, but in some cases it can be. So make the temple work deity your worshipful deity, and you may also have your home deities in your Grihasta Ashram. But you should see that your deity at home is simply as an expansion of the local deity in the area. The deity becomes the proprietor of the area. That's why Prabhupada named, in London, he Radha London Ishwara. <laughs> 
He's the Ishwar of London. <laughs> he's, he, he's the he's he's what he's called Ma. He's called Parmeshwar, but for the sake of local worship, he's called London Ishwar. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, the word to Prabhu, is that okay with you? So if you're living in the temple, don't keep your own deities. Um, there is one question from, okay. So the word to Prabhu is saying, perfect, thank you. So there is a question from Raghu Prabhu. He's saying, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, could you please share some pastimes you have had with deities? <laughs> no. <laughs> These are personal things. We don't want to talk about them just in, in a public forum. It's not something you just talk about. But every devotee who has done regular worship with deities also has their personal experiences like that some more than others. Some, it's just, it's just not something we just talk about in, in the very, you know, you know, ordinary way. If you come to me personally, I can speak to you. <laughs> but I, don't want to speak about these things in a in a general way because they kind of it kind of cheapens the whole experience. But the deity is there, and the deity becomes the main focus. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, Raghu, I think you're in you're in London, right? Is that correct? Yeah, he's saying yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so uh, maybe you can tell about your experiences with the deities, because <laughs> if you want. And you should actually write a book about that because this Mr. Raghu here, he's, he has many, many experiences with the deities. <laughs> and Raghu is worshiping the deities that I used to worship when I was no longer able to keep deities because of travel. I gave it to Raghu, Raghu Pati and he is now worshiping uh, one two, three, four, four different forms of the deities that I worship. He has my former Gornetai, my former Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, my former Lakshmi Nasringa, and my former Pallad Nasringa all are being worshipped at the, the home of Raghu. And um, now they're getting better worship than they ever were before. <laughs> so. And when I used to go to Raghu's house, he would tell me some of the pastimes of the deities. So Krishna's there. He's there. There is one more question on chat, Guru Maharaj from Devananda Pandit Prabhu. Uh, he is saying, is it possible in the local temple to install household deities who will live not in the temple, but in the house where the Grestas live? Uh, 
repeat the question uh, is it possible in the local temple to install household deities who will live not in the temple but in the house where the grihasthas live not sure i understand yeah devananda pandit prabhu would you like to unmute yourself please i will explain thank you much i will explain it in um, i'm sorry i can't explain um, no english is not so good yes yes i'm sorry um well household deities are household deities and temple deities are temple deities <laughs> uh just like here i'm in lubiana and uh we do usually every saturday afternoon we do a puja for lakshmi nishringa we do nishringa and nishringa homa nishringa yagya we've been doing that ever since this uh pandemic has started so we bring in one set of deities from the outside one of our congregational members who lives nearby brings his beautiful deity of lakshmi nishringa to the temple and we place him in a worshipful place sometimes he's placed on the altar with the deities and we also do the puja but then when the puja is over the deity returns to the home he doesn't stay in the temple he's not part of the temple but he comes in order to facilitate his own worship for the benefit of all the devotees we have another de devotee who is very active in deity worship he has many of the forms of the lord and then on that particular appearance day he'll bring that deity and we'll do the abhishek for that deity so for instance he has a deity of um of vamana dev also little dwarf vamana with a little umbrella over his head it was a beautiful deity of vamana dev so and he has many deities he has deities of practically all the incarnations that are available and uh and so he facilitates that worship at the temple for the devotees present there but then again when it's over he takes his deity and returns to the home so when you have deities in the temple they're installed with the prana pratishta when you have home deities you install those deities through a regular worship and after an extended form of time then that dd becomes uh, what we say installed installed by the principle of time but temple deities or temple deities home deities or home deities <laughs> sometimes a home deity is brought to the temple but it's not a temple deity <laughs> is that come close to your question Yes, it is. It is close. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you, David Andapandit. Hare Krishna. Uh, Diptesh Prabhu, you have raised your hand. Please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, am I audible? Because I'm just outside uh, with some weak signal. Uh, um, I can hear you, but it's a okay. little. The volume is a little lower than normal. <laughs> Try to speak louder, Maharaj. So thank you very much for this class. Uh, I have two questions. So the first is, uh, when the deities are installed in the temple using the pran pratishta, a level of worship has to be maintained. What? Correct. 
have and we have seen in India Diptesh Prabhu your voice is breaking sorry the temples becomes derelict or the worship is neg worship is neglected then who does the worship uh, is it uh, how oh, it's is it better now? Um, I missed practically the whole question. <laughs> Prabhu, can you please repeat the question? It seems like we lost his communication. <laughs> yeah, he's saying, I will ask the questions tomorrow. As the signal is bad here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to your holiness. Dear, um, I had to step away for just a moment and I hope you you might have explained something and I, and I missed it, but I have a misunderstanding. I understand that, you know, we should have installed deities in the home. I don't, as you well know, I don't have installed deities, but I feel that um, the Lord is there, even though the deities are not installed. Is, does this, is it a, a question of um, degree? Because I, I, I feel that they're there with me on my question, altar and they're not installed. Question of worship. It's a question of worship. Regular devotional worship brings about the principle of installation through the principle of time. This is an authorized form of installation called the time element, but it's only understood through bhakti. When bhakti is there and it's manifested in regular worship over a period of time, the deity is considered to be within the home acceptable as an installed deity. That doesn't happen immediately. It happens over a period of time. <laughs> okay. So you were just explaining that basically. So, um, so if my worship would be the same as if the deity had been installed over a period of time, that deity, does that mean he's that the deities are not there? I mean, I believe they're oh, there. They're there, yeah. They're there. How much you can realize that is based on how, 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 uh, the level of your bhakti. <laughs> okay. So they are there. So then if, if they are there, what, why do they have to be installed if they, if, well, that's kind uh, of stupid. Yeah, okay. that's not, that's, I just explained the question. I've been explaining that same point that for home worship, time is the element that uh, uh, categorizes installation. Over a period of time with, with regular worship, the deity becomes installed. Okay. Very good. Well, I, I uh, think I, yeah. yeah. That's part of you, if you can, you can read that in the deity worship book. They explain that. And that, that can happen even if the person or a person living in the house is still eating meat. Not myself, obviously, but. Well, that's. Um, yeah, of course, if you have one person who is a meat eater and another person who is uh, worshiping the deities with complete attention and devotion. Um, generally, we say that wherever there is cooking and eating of meat, the deity should not be there. It's considered to be uh, less than suitable for the Lord to be in that area where 
meat eating is there because people don't understand the gravity of the sinful nature of meat eating. It's very sinful. Prabhupada used to say that, you know, illicit sex, you know, intoxication, but meat eating is even worse than these two. <laughs> it's worse <laughs> because it is simply based on the principle of violence in order to satisfy the lusty palate. <laughs> It's not, you know, therefore nowhere in any of our uh, temples or even in around do we allow meat eating anywhere, cooking and eating and meat. So when that's gone, you'll see that the atmosphere will change and you'll feel the energy of you'll feel more of the spiritual energy in the presence of the deity. When he's there, he's not really manifesting himself as himself. Mm. He holds back because the atmosphere is not pure. Generally, we don't even allow that, but in certain cases, in order to give concessions to the devotee who wants to worship, uh, it's gone, but then, I mean, if you have Radha Krishna there, you know, there's no worship at all. If you have Jagannath, there's no worship. Gornitai may somehow or other remain in that atmosphere, but because we, we know that Lord Chaitanya, he would even deal with meat eaters and drunkards just mm -hmm. to make them Krishna conscious. So he's very merciful. He goes beyond all rules and regulations when it comes to showing mercy to the conditioned souls. So for the benefit of the meat eater, he stays. <laughs> um, I see. Yes. Okay. That makes sense for Maharaj. It makes more sense to me now. I didn't, sometimes I don't understand it, um, but I, it makes more sense now. Perfect. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, please, you can raise now. Is there any more in the chat? No, Guru Maharaj, not in any chat, not in chat. So we are already 11 minutes over. Okay, so I guess we can conclude here. And thank you very much. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Um, let me think. Uh, Thursday, we have the program with the Harrisburg deities. Uh, the Harrisburg, I'm sorry, the Harrisburg devotees. <laughs> Maybe they're also deities. <laughs> Harrisburg devotees. And uh, the schedule for Thursday, for those who are arranging the calendar, is that uh, we'll be speaking on First Canto, sixth chapter, verse number twenty-one. So that's tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, one six. I mean, that's Thursday. One six twenty-one. Tomorrow, um, I will try to present a topic for the calendar display sometimes before the class tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for giving your time and association. Thanks, devotee, for joining this session. Srila uh, Prabhupada ki jai, Gurudev ki jai. Anant Koti Vishnu Brindi Ki Jai. 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 Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Abhaduta, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Suda.
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you. 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 Thank you.